Well, I'll just um, I'll just briefly start by saying that there is no sentence that is sufficient to bring true justice because Kristen is gone, forever gone. But we will never give up looking for her and, and seeking to find her and bring her back for the family. But what the family just did today and, and the loved ones in sharing their thoughts about Kristen, um, I think sums up a proverb, Proverbs 31, eight. It says, speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, ensure justice for those being crushed. And I can't add any more words to uh, what the family has given today about the measure of their loss, about the, the joy that Kristen has brought into their lives and, and the fact that she will always, always live on in their hearts and our community's hearts. Um, but today we stand with the smart family and we will never, ever forget Kristen and we will never give up until her body is, is found and you're able to properly receive her and bury her. Thank you very much. Did you want to read? Yeah, yeah. Any, anything you want to add yeah. to that? I think yeah. Yeah. So we have some comments and then I'll respond to a few questions. Well, all I wanted to say, I said upstairs. So <clears throat> today is a day not really of joy. It's, it's a day of relief that Kristen's voice was heard. We were very fortunate that her voice was heard today but it's not the voice any parent hopes to hear on the courtroom steps or in a courtroom. But her voice was heard, and that brings us a sense of peace, knowing that there will be no more victims. And that's the peace that we, that we get. But it's also time for Los Angeles to give voice to the women who lost their lives well, they didn't lose their lives, but they lost part of their lives to Paul. And their voices have not been heard. And justice is for everyone. So if a man was assaulted, there would be justice. A sexual assault is an assault. And Los Angeles needs to step up and give voice to these women who have been silenced by their inaction. Okay, any of you have questions that you'd like to uh, bring up? We'd really like to thank all of you that are here for being so supportive and giving us media coverage. And uh, we definitely are very appreciative of the San Luis Obispo area community, Aurora Grande, Shell Beach, coming back, and, and San Luis Obispo, and the DA's office, and the uh, Sheriff's office for all the work that they've done. And without their help and your help, this wouldn't have come true today. Uh, but we're, we're not happy because we don't have our daughter. We don't know where her remains are. And so, uh, as the judge pointed out, you know, it's a sentence, but it doesn't bring back your loved one. So, from that aspect, you know, we don't have closure. But we know that the uh, Sheriff's Department and the District Attorney's Office will continue to look for her remains and see if we can find her. So, I'd like to uh, thank everyone and Chris for welcome. Well, Chris, yeah. Chris? Chris is we have two Chris's here. here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have Chris and Chris. Chris and Chris, what a team. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, both these gentlemen did a great deal for us, obviously. And, uh, Chris and Chris, I don't know who, who should go first. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> our podcaster here really made a big difference as far as getting the word out as far as our daughter's life. And yeah, come up, Clint. This is uh, the Sheriff's Department. He did a whole lot of work. And JT, come over, yeah. He's an investigator for the DA's office. Our many cornerstones. Gentlemen, all of them made a big difference. So. There are more people than what I could thank. I mean, my heart really goes out to our family. Loves you dearly. I think we've adopted all of you. <laughs> Hopefully, you've adopted us a little bit. So, Chris, can you can you kind of go through what this Chris, what uh, the sentence means? Like how early he could get parole, and all you know, spell it out for us. Sure. Well, California has enacted uh, earlier parole and is paroling more and more murderers. So, realistically, in about 15 years, he might be eligible for. So it's important. I know everyone here will stay on top of it, and I will personally appear at every single parole hearing as long as I'm alive. 
Can you give us just your reaction? I mean, obviously, it's been a long haul for you as well, and, and kind of coming to to a conclusion sure. is for you right now. My reaction is is relief that Paul Flores will never hurt another person. Just relief, and that's what I, I keep coming back to. Um, my secondary reaction is the power of the community coming together from Chris to all of San Luis Obispo County supporting us uh, throughout the entire years. It's, it's the community can make a difference and the community supporting us in law enforcement makes a huge difference. Um, and then lastly, it's uh, to victims out there who are thinking of coming forward, families who are waiting for it on their loved ones, it's don't ever give up hope because there are people in the system who care deeply and will never give up trying to find justice for their loved ones. So those are my quick reactions. So Chris Lambert, um, you, uh, your name was mentioned a lot in court and you sort of got thrust into this case in a way that you probably didn't expect. So what are you feeling this afternoon? Um, gosh. Um, it, it just feels like so long ago. It feels like so long ago even that I started looking into this story and that was so long after she'd initially disappeared. It's been, I was eight years old when she went missing. This has been my entire life and it's something that I really delved into about five years ago, and I just never expected just step after step all of this to unravel the way that it did, but um, today's obviously the best the best possible outcome uh, short of finding Kristen. So do you stop? Yeah. Mr. Smart, sorry, Richard. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you mentioned there won't be closure until you find Kristen and you bring her home. Right. <laughs> what can you do, what will you do in, in the coming days to try and ultimately well, do, make that happen? I think probably uh, getting the word out, you're getting the word out for us, and then watching and see what the uh, DA's office and the sheriff's office hears about from people that might come forward having you know, heard about the trial and uh, the ending. Um, so, you know, it's gather information once again and not give up, so. And you still have hope one day, we'll, we'll be speaking with you. Well, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm very hopeful, I think. Uh, I'm hoping that uh, after Paul goes in the system and he's behind bars, he'll have some second thoughts. I'm really disappointed in the parents and their responses. Just, um, I can't fathom how they think or what their values are. Uh, it's just beyond me, totally beyond me. Where do you go from here? Like, what are your next steps? Obviously, this has been consuming your life for the past 27 years. Well, we probably will come up for air for a little bit and then we'll. <laughs> <laughs> Go forward. We're gonna have a little break, I think, for the family. But uh, you now that's Kristen's part of our family, so you know she's part of the big family here. So I feel like there's two clear actions, though, that we will, we will take. And my myself and my mom referenced them. My mom mentioned she won't give up, but I will continue alongside her to make sure that Paul doesn't get out. And if that means you know changing laws retroactively for people that know where the body is, the person they murdered. And there's, there's no incentive for him to speak up right now. We'll find a way to make an incentive for him to speak up because we do want her home. And another clear action, I mean, I'm just so grateful. My sister's not here and she doesn't have a voice. And there was two Jane Doe's proud enough to like, brave enough to stand up there and be her voice. And without that voice, I don't know if we'd have this conviction. So it's, they're truly the unsung heroes here. and. I'm so grateful for them and I equally want their justice and their justice isn't here. They're, they were here for us to get our justice, but they deserve justice. And I encourage LA County to stand up and give right. them justice. Cause when they testified, they said, no one would believe us and they're right right now. And I'd, I'd love for them to get justice as well. We're privileged and fortunate to stand here today. And while it did take us 26 years, I don't want it to take 26 years for them, for them to get their justice and all the other women who maybe haven't spoken up because it's, you have to be incredibly brave to come forward with that type of information, so. What did you think about what the judge had to say? She was, she was pretty uh, forthright in her comments. Yeah, I was uh, very impressed. She's very articulate. She had studied everything. She had gone back through all the notes and uh, she had put together her thoughts and she had them written down. There were no gray areas and I was very impressed. So I think we were very fortunate having her this. Well, Clint, one question from you. Today is a big day for you, not only with the, the sentencing, but this is tomorrow's first day of retirement, right? Correct. So how does it feel to have your last day on the clock be this day? 
feels really good. I was uh, I was happy to see Paul being walked away. Um, um, it feels amazing, um, you know, uh, giving them some sort of justice um, feels good. It all happening on my last day of employment with the sheriff's office is just an amazing, amazing thing. When you first took this assignment, the cold case assignment, were you, ho I mean, obviously you were hopeful that this would be the, the outcome, but, but did you really expect this to, to come this far? Um, not early on because the case is so large, um, it's overwhelming. Um, but then I, I got into it a little bit and developed a theory, um, trick, tricked uh, Chris in the DA's office into filing the case and I felt confident at that point. But at first, no, I mean, the first year and a half, I thought, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? Um, but, you know, that's why we have people look at the cases call you know new eyes on the case and it just we just kind of developed a theory and uh, once that was developed and you know mr. Dow and the DA's office jumped on board then yeah I felt real comfortable at that point so maybe this is a question for uh, mr. Burrell but I and I ask 